<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Awesome. Yeah, it is a little bit dreary out this morning. We haven't. We don't have the splendor of sunshine and clear skies that we had last week, but. Nonetheless, we are here together. So as we gather this morning here at the Columbus Community Churches, Columbus Ministries, we welcome all of those who have come to join us in person this morning, and also those of you who are joining us online. Um, I never thought we would last year in our services every week, but uh, the events of this world for the last year and a half have given us many new opportunities to reach folks and to share the message of saving grace found only through Jesus Christ. So we are thankful for that opportunity to minister here in person and online, and uh, we welcome all of you as we come in this morning. So uh, would you all please rise on your feet? We're going to start in some worship this morning, and we're going to start with what I think you've heard before if you've been here before, but it's one that we love to get warmed up to and really sets our hearts and our minds on worship, and it's called No Longer Slaves. Jesus and let go of all of our fears. God, we confess that 
There are times when fear knocks on the door and it almost overwhelms us. But you remind us to not be afraid. Over and over your word tells us we are no longer slaves to fear, but we're children of God. So God, we pray that you would remind us of that today. As we worship, we ask that your spirit would speak and stir and transform and move in our hearts. God, we love you so much. And we pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
that we are here to love God, to love people, and to serve, and to guide each other into growing relationships with Jesus. And so I have lots of opportunities in the next couple of weeks for you to love God, to love each other, to guide each other to grow, and to serve. So are you ready? If you have a pen and paper out to take notes, or this is uh, being taped, you can rewatch it back because it's a lot of good stuff. So first, there is a Dry Bones Festival happening. Michelle just got this look on her face. Like, Ooh, dry Bones come to life. It's a good thing. Uh, the, I hope I'm saying this right. The Fud Pucker? Is that how I say that? The Fud Pucker Factory. I was a little nervous about that one. I thought, Pastor, I'll send it to me, so it must be correct. It's across from Dairy Queen uh, here in Cory. So it's on Thursday night, the 9th at 7 p.m., Friday night, the 10th at 7 p.m., in like a few days, like this coming week, so in September. And then it's on Saturday at 2. They are going to have all sorts of activities for kids. Uh, it's a festival. There are a ton of great speakers. Uh, I know Bill Vanderbush is coming in from Florida. If you've never heard him speak, he's fantastic. Jeff Strauss. Um, I think a bunch of local people. It's going to be really cool. Uh, but they've been praying about this. Pastor Al met with Corey and John and Mike a while ago, and the Lord really put this on his heart that it should be on the weekend of September 11th as it's the 20-year anniversary. And so they're praying about this. There's going to be a sign-up, I believe, in the back for Scripture. So they want to have Scripture read every 15 minutes all day on Saturday the 11th. So if you want to sign up to read a Scripture, there's a sign-up for that. Otherwise, show up Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Uh, we can post information online this week. If you have questions, let us know. And be praying that a lot of dry bones come to life this weekend. Um, the second announcement is that Barb and Wayne Emery, they're from the Finley Lake United Methodist Church in Finley Lake, they're doing a ministry that they've been trained to do called Healing Ministries. They're doing a separate men's group and a women's group, and it looks really powerful. So I have the information, same thing had it on a slide, uh, but if you get on the website, if you want the information, let me know. I also have sign-up sheets when you walk out if you want one. It's a 29-week course, so it's a pretty intense commitment, uh, and there is a cost involved, but if you need help with that, we can help with it. It's a pretty powerful Bible study on healing. And it's about how to heal internally from abuse, from things in your past, from finding healing in the Lord. Uh, the testimonies Barb and Wayne have shared are powerful. So if that's something you're interested in or you know somebody who would like that, it's going to be on Wednesday nights uh, for 29 weeks starting at the end of September. So let me know if you're interested in that. Uh, Brian has also been announcing the Breakthrough Weekend is at the end of September, the 24th and 25th. Turn your shirt around. Yeah, 24th and 25th. Uh, at Erie First. So you can sign up online or ask us for uh, papers if you want to sign up for that. The men's Bible study will not be meeting here this week. So if you show up and wonder where is Bible study, they're meeting here, but then they're going to a movie, correct? So if you want to RSVP for a ticket to the movie, it's some awesome new movie coming out by the people that produce Courageous, correct? So contact Corey if you want to go to get a ticket and then for that. Jen, did you want to say anything about the women's Bible study Wednesday night? Okay. So next Sunday, come next Sunday. Now you're going to be on pins and needles to want to know what Jen's going to talk about. I think the women are in the war room, though, right? So uh, women are invited to that on Wednesday nights. Youth kickoff is the 18th of September. Woohoo! <laughs> well, I'm excited and I'm going to be there because I'm young at heart. So you take note of that. Uh, Pam. Her birthday was you go over there on my bingo. You can come. You're invited. Are you not with me? No, I'm not. Does anybody want to guess? <laughs> I'm older, Brian, by a lot. Pam is having a women's retreat, so RCP to Pam, uh, September 19th, two, two weeks from today, right? Yeah. Holy cow. And it's going to be about being comfortable, or not being comfortable. It's going to be really good. So women, RCP for that, it's going to be really good. Awana starts the first Monday night in October in Climber, so kids that want to go to Awana or any adults that want to help, let us know. The 5 and 2 packing food night is this Tuesday. The golf fundraiser is Saturday if you want to help sponsor that. And I think that's the majority of my announcements. There's a lot going on, which is really exciting. All right. Kids and adult kids. Fist bumps, fist bumps online. How many of you like to get gifts? Anybody? Like to get gifts? How many of you like to give gifts? Anybody? How many of you like to go to weddings? How many of you like to get gifts at weddings? So we were at a wedding yesterday, and we got this gift, and I found out later that the groom's family makes honey. So we got this cool little thing, a bag 
white tee and a nice little bear of honey. Isn't that cute? I know you almost don't want to eat it because it's so cute. Um, but what I was struck by is I was looking at this honey and thinking about how you know honey is sticky and it's delicious and it's wonderful. And there's scripture verses that talk about how God's word is as sweet as honey. So his word is sticky, it holds us together, it's flavorful, it's like salt that makes everything taste better. So the next time you eat honey, I want you to also think about God's word and how delicious and wonderful it is. Uh, I've talked before about our kids at Cedarville say they're not allowed to have breakfast before they read their Bible. No Bible, no breakfast. And so my prayer is that we'll have our Bibles and our breakfast this week and it will hold us together in a way nothing else can. So let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you for the gifts that you give us. We thank you for the good and perfect gifts that come from above, like James 1.17 reminds us. We thank you for the gift of weddings and celebrating and families uniting. We thank you for the gift of worship, being able to be here and focus on you and your word. God, we ask today that your word would comfort those who are grieving, Lord, we pray for people who have lost loved ones this week that you would give peace and comfort as only you can. God, we pray for those who are sick and tired, whether it's physically or emotionally or spiritually, and we pray for your healing touch and your strength. God, we ask for everybody who's going back to school, whether it's teachers or bus drivers or administrators or students, whether it's public school or home school, for all those who are beginning a new year of learning, would you give grace and strength and protection and work in a way that only you can. God, we thank you for all the ways you work and move, even in the hard times in life. We're mindful of all that has happened and is still happening in Afghanistan and Haiti and New Orleans and around the globe, and we just continue to pray, God, that you would work in ways that only you can, and that you would bring good out of evil and light out of darkness. God, we thank you for this time that we can worship and focus on you. And we thank you for the times coming up in the days ahead. We pray for the Dry Bones Festival that's happening this weekend. And we ask that each speaker and each person that comes would point people to you and that you would work in amazing ways. So God, we thank you and we praise you and we pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So this next song we're going to sing is called It Is Well, and it's a beautiful song, and we're going to talk a little bit in the song today that we're going to go through about how sometimes it's not well in our circumstances, but God can still bring joy even out of the hardest of times, and He is the one that makes things well. Yeah. We're reminded in Genesis 50 that even what the enemy means to evil, God can use for good. And my prayer is that we can focus on that. And even if it doesn't feel well anywhere else, when we look to him, we see that he is well, and he makes all things well. So let's continue to worship. Yeah. 
or we're fearful, or we're hurt, or we're scared, and sometimes the climb just seems almost impossible to us. But you ask us to keep putting one foot in front of the other, and so here we are, ascending together, asking for you to help us. God, we confess that sometimes the mountains in life seem bigger than we are, but remind us again today that you are the mountain and your strength carries us, and it's not our feelings that matter, but it's the fact of who you are. So we thank you for your help at all times and in all circumstances. God, I pray today that you would teach us something new in this psalm. I pray that you would show us your truth, and I pray that it would take deep root in our hearts so that we would think about it and ruminate on it tomorrow and Wednesday and Friday, and it would bear fruit that would point other people to you. That's our prayer, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So the picture that is on here, Joe and I picked it yesterday before we went to the wedding, is from a week ago on Saturday. Last week, we talked about how amazing that night was, remember? Our sky went from rainbow to beautiful sunset to light breaking through clouds, and it was just amazing. And personally, our family had, had kind of a tough week. And so it was one of those days where I think God knew we needed a nice sky. <laughs> you know how sometimes you're like, okay, Lord, it's raining again. Like, where's the sunshine? Uh, so this picture was important to me. This was in the middle of everything that was going on with Afghanistan, and it's still happening there, and in Haiti and around the globe. And we have a flag in our front yard. Uh, we did not put it there. The people who owned the house before us put it there. And I was looking at the flag and thinking about our country, and the light was just bursting through the clouds. And it was just one of those moments where I thought, man, I feel joy right now. <laughs> like, God is still God, and he is at work, and his light is gonna burst through any cloud that comes into my life every single time. Rainy days will come, dark clouds will come, but the sunrise, the sunset, the rainbows, they never fail. And God reminds us of that. So it brought me joy. And Psalm 126 today is called a harvest of joy. Now, I think you all are aware that the McCrae's have some delicious sweet corn. They are in the middle. Yeah, you got a lot. You have more amens than I did today. <laughs> we are in the middle of a harvest of delicious sweet corn. And it's a good thing. They, they plant and they prepare. And we were talking to Dave about a week ago, and there's quite a science behind this. Dave is way smarter than I am about planting corn. And he's got all these methods and things he does and ways that he's perfected it so that it's perfect. But they don't just wake up magically one day and there's corn. <laughs> there's work. They plant the seed and they work and there's toil and there's labor. And then we get the delicious corn. Then we celebrate the harvest. And then you're backwards. And then you're backwards. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Then you need to come to church and pray for healing. <laughs> I know. I know. But the backwards thing. We've had sweet corn every night, Friday, and how long? We're enjoying the harvest. The psalmist wants us to have a harvest of joy. And so we're going to talk today about joy. But we're going to be very clear that the harvest of joy doesn't just appear magically. We plant seeds of tears and sadness and sorrow. And the seeds that are planted, God restores and grows, and we get this harvest. And we get glimpses of the harvest here and now, but one day... When we're fully face to face with Jesus, the harvest of joy is going to explode better than any sunset or sunrise or rainbow we've ever seen. And that gives us courage to keep sowing and to keep planting as we go. So I have a question as we begin into this song today. When was the last time you shouted for joy? I think I heard one today during Red Letters. I heard a hallelujah! Last night we were at this wedding, and the family obviously was very joyful because they were at a wedding and they were celebrating. And there was a moment during the end of the dance, you know, where there's a dance at the end, and the song by Journey came on, Don't Stop Believing, if you would know this song. And you know, it's one of those songs that everybody knows. And I watched as one by one, their family went out on the dance floor, and by the end of it, they were belting it so loud. Don't stop believing! I mean, their faces with joy, and I just stood back and watched, and I thought, this is a glimpse of heaven. Like, just shouting and screaming and celebrating and that amazing feeling. Mike and I came home, and we were like, oh, we just want to bottle that. And Mike said, you know, we've done and been to lots of 
wedding in our 20 years of ministry. But last night we were driving home and he said, what is it about a wedding that reminds you of heaven? This is why scripture talks about the bride and the bridegroom and the feast to come and the joy and the celebration. The harvest of joy is the picture I want you to have as we go through this song. So I want you to think about when was the last time you shouted for joy? Was it in worship? Was it at a wedding? Was it at a sporting event? When was the last time you were just so excited you just shouted for joy? And then hang on to that. Because that's the vision you need to have in the times when you're sorrowful and you're hurting and there's tears because those seeds will become a harvest of joy. And that's why we're here. So we're going to dig into Psalm 126. If you have your pew Bible, you can pull it out and follow along. You can watch on the screen or just look on your sermon notes. Verse 1 says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue was shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to dig through this and parse through this. I have heard and read this psalm many times in my life. But as I studied it this week, I learned new insights I have never thought about before. And my prayer is that you will hear them and learn them as well. Because this is a psalm that really is transformative. So as Mike has shared quite a bit, we're using this book by Eugene Peterson called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction, Discipleship in an Instant Society. Peterson had some great insight on this song, so I want to share just a little bit with you. Uh, referring to joy, I want you to notice in the middle of the song, in about verse 3, it says, The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. So what Peterson points out is this. These words point to the past, the present, and the future. Joy has a past a present, and a future. What are the great things the psalmist is referring to? Just open your Bible. Throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, God makes a way in the wilderness. He parts the Red Sea. He drops quail and manna from heaven. Jesus dies on the cross and rises from the grave. The deaf hear, the blind see, the lame walk. All these great things God has done for his people throughout scripture. And you've had them in your life too. Great things that God has done. Peterson says this about joy. Sometimes as Christians we forget God calls us to be joyful. Joy is something that comes from Jesus. There are two images I want you to fix your hope on. Look at the scripture. The first is this in verse 4. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water in the Negev. The second image, those who sow in tears, verse 5, will reap shouts of joy. God takes the deserts in our life and brings water. And God takes the tears and brings joy. That's something pretty unique. That's not something everybody can boast about. Peterson says this, the person who wrote Psalm 126 was no stranger to the dark side of life. I think sometimes we think if we have joy, everything must be great. Sun's always shining, money in the bank account, healthy, feeling good, woohoo, joy, hallelujah. Have you ever known somebody who has walked through a dark time and still has joy? That's one of the most powerful, amazing beautiful thing in the world. I also want to point out something good. We can laugh. Laughter? Did you see that? 
Laughter is a result of living in the joy of God. How many of you like to laugh? I love a good laugh. Laughter is healthy. It's important. It's biblical. The song doesn't give us joy as a package or a formula. It reminds us that our joy comes in the midst of pain. And our joy comes from seeing God at work through our pain. So look at verse 1. The Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, and we were like those who dream. How many of you have a dream in your heart? Maybe you're like dreaming of that perfect person, and you just can't wait to meet them, and marry them, and start a family. Or maybe you have a dream of a ministry you want to start. Maybe you have a dream of a Bible study you want to be a part of, or a dream of some group you want to see birth and grow. Or maybe you have a dream of, man, I see this happening, Lord. You've put this on my heart. I want this dream to happen. We all have had moments in our life where we have big dreams. And when something happens that kind of doubts the dream, somebody tells us we can't do it, or we get tired, or we get busy. And God says, when I restore, when I take something that needs to be fixed and healed and restored, you dream again. So, I don't know who needs to hear that today, who's listening or is here, but God wants to restore your heart so that you dream again, so that you get excited about what he's doing, and you're never too old or too young to have a dream for God. Your dream can be big and it can be small, and God honors that. So imagine for a second, wow, God, what do you want me to dream about? What do you want to do in me and through me and in and through us as a group? Because when God restores us, we dream. And then our mouths are filled with laughter. And our tongues are filled with shouts of joy. And then people are going to start saying, wow, look at the Lord has done great things for them. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be known as a church where people are like, why are they so joyful? Why are they laughing and smiling and having a good time, even though I know their life isn't easy? What great things has the Lord done for them? And that means spiritually. It doesn't mean, oh, we're all going to win the lottery tomorrow. Oh, we're all going to... No, it means God's going to do great things in us spiritually. What is he going to do? The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoice. So the psalmist isn't afraid to pray, Lord, restore our fortunes. I don't know about you, but this is a prayer that I forget to pray sometimes. God, restore my heart for you. God, restore my marriage to the day I met Mike and fell in love with him so that it's that good and even better again. God, restore this friendship that maybe I let fall away. God, restore my passion for you. God wants us to pray, Lord, restore us. I looked up the word restore this week. The definition is to give back, to return, to bring back into existence, to put in possession of something again. And here are some other words in replace of it. To refresh, recharge, recreate, regenerate, rejuvenate, renew, repair, resuscitate, revitalize, revive. That's some good stuff. What if we would all pray, Lord, restore us, revive us? We could pray that for our country, couldn't we? We could pray that for people in our lives. God, restore them, revive them, rejuvenate them. Now, why do we pray this? Because those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. There is nothing more beautiful than seeing somebody joyful after they've been through something hard. This is a minor example, but because it's my kid, it makes me cry. So a lot of you were praying for Grace. Her first week of college, she ended up in isolation, and it was tough for her. First whole problem, I recognize. There was more important things going on across the globe, but in my mama's heart, it was tough. And she called one time, kind of down. There were tears. Mom, you know, are you praying for me? This isn't easy. We prayed for her. But I remember, she was still in those tears. And now she's out of isolation. And let me tell you the difference when she called this week. Mom! Do you know what my friend and I did? Mom! You can hear the joy oozing out of the phone. And if her life was always joyful, it wouldn't mean near as much. But when your kid sows in tears, 
and then reach in joy. Boy, do you feel the joy a whole lot more, do you not? When we go through the hard times, it makes the joyful times so much more amazing. So if you are sowing in tears today, I have hope for you. I have good news for you. Those tears you're sowing in joy are going to reap a harvest that is going to be unbelievable and point people to Jesus. And that's pretty powerful. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, will come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. One more testimony story, and then we're going to dig a little deeper into the scripture. Mike and I often talk about the very first funeral we ever did. So we were newly ordained. It was 1999. If you turn the clock back a few decades, we did not know what we were doing. We were young and we were at the church, and the head pastor on our staff thought, hey, two new young people are here, I'm going on vacation. We were like, oh no. Day one, the phone rings. And there was a couple from our church, young couple, and their daughter was born at 21 weeks, lived a few minutes, and died. Can you please come to the funeral? Mike and I were like, uh, yeah. Turn the clock back. The reason Mike went into ministry is because when his first nephew was born, he lived six days and died. And Mike watched the tears that were sown in front of him. And he watched the pastor who walked him through that and brought joy out of the tears. And in that, the Lord said to Mike, this is what I want you to do with your life too. No coincidence that what called Mike into ministry was the first funeral we ever did. And there were tears. There were painful tears. If you are a parent who has ever buried a child in a small little box, there were tears sown. That couple had several miscarriages after that, but eventually had a couple healthy kids. Fast forward, we took our kids to Camp Geneva in Holland, Michigan, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, and that couple was there. We hadn't seen them in a decade. And they came running up to us. Do you want to meet our 15-year-old daughter now? And the joy on their faces. It wasn't lost on me that they sowed in tears, that they reaped a harvest of joy. And Jesus knows all about that. When he died on the cross and watched his mom weeping, but then the joy on Easter Sunday, don't be scared of sowing tears of sadness because God brings a harvest of joy out of it. All right, Joe, we can go ahead to the next slide. If you look down on your sermon notes, after the scripture, we get into the next business where it talks about how God is in the business of restoring. Lord, restore the slides. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even the little things in life. God is in the business of restoration. He takes darkness to light, pain to healing, Sadness to laughter, tears to joy, death to life. This is the gospel. This is what God does. This is why we come every week, because we bring our hearts that are heavy and our tears, and we sing, and God does amazing things through that. This is what he does. This is who he is. So you need to be praying, Lord, restore us. Lord, restore this person in my life. Lord, restore these people. So pay attention to that. Go ahead to the next one, Joe. Joy, this harvest of joy we're praying for, is not dependent on circumstances. Joy is dependent on Jesus. Rejoicing is the outward expression of our internal joy. Joy comes from being in God's presence. He is our source of joy. There are 25 different Hebrew words and 10 different Greek words that make up over 150 references to joy in the Bible. That's why it's hard to explain. There's a lot of words for joy. But the bottom line is, you sometimes can't explain it. When you have those moments of joy, when you're just, ah! That's from God. That's a gift that Jesus gives us. How in the world did Paul and Silas rejoice at midnight in jail? Because they have joy, because they have the presence of Jesus. Go ahead, Joe. The Psalms have more references to joy than any other book in the Bible. 
Nehemiah reminds us in chapter 8, verse 10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Not the joy of our friends, not the joy of our marriage, not the joy of the delicious sweet corn we eat, although it's good. The joy of the Lord is where we get our strength. Psalm 16 reminds us that it's in his presence we find fullness of joy. Not in our finances, not in people, not in the things of this world. You might get glimpses of joy. I mean, there are glimpses of joy in the people sitting next to you. There are glimpses of joy in really good food. There are glimpses of joy in sporting events. But the fullness of joy, you only get that in the Lord's presence. James 1-2 says to count it joy in trials. Who counts it joy in trials? I tell you what, when my kid called from college and said she was in quarantine, there's no way I was going to say, hey, Grace, count it joy. Lucky you. Now that she's out of quarantine, now she can say, Mom, I see the joy in that trial. I see how God worked. I see how he moved. When we are in trials, when we're sowing the tears, it's really hard to be joyful. But if we could keep our eyes on the end goal, that all the glimpses of joy throughout our life are going to culminate in fullness of joy in God's presence forever and ever, pretty powerful. All right, Joe, keep going. We've talked a lot in this Ascending Psalms series about how God is our help, he's our keeper, he's our mountain, he's our safe place, we can trust him. One of my favorite sermons Mike has done so far is how we don't have to ask why things happen, but how God will get us through. He wants us to hide his word in our hearts so that his word lights our path, one step at a time. He replaces the fears, the doubts, the insecurities with his truth, his joy, and his peace. And it's a daily climb as we ascend together. I have said it once, I'll say it 3,000 more times. We climb up together, but there are days when we fall down a couple notches. And then we have to help each other to get back up again. And we take a step forward and then we take a step back. That's part of the spiritual journey. You can't be hard on yourself. There are days where all we do is sow tears. And then there are days where all we do is celebrate the harvest of joy. We do both. And we do it together. All right, Joe, keep on going. John 14, last week Mike talked about how he opened up his Bible and it led him to John 15, and then he went back to John 14. This is where we get our real joy. Just like verse 6 in Psalm 126 today, God is preparing a home for us where the joy will last forever. So the struggles might not end this side of heaven, but one day they will. And what a glorious day that will be. And until then, we have his help. We have his strength. We have the promise that even the tears will reap a harvest of joy. Even the hard times will end up becoming refined like the refiner's fire. Guys, this is really, really good news. All right, Joe, keep going. So think of a time when you were filled with laughter and joy. Look back to remember the times the Lord has done great things for you. He's answered a prayer. He restored a relationship. He provided a need. He healed a hurt. When you take stock of all the good he's done, then you rejoice and you shout for joy. You take inventory. I want to share a couple more things, and then we're going to close with some application steps for you. The psalmist talked about restoration of dreams. I want to read what one of the commentaries I read this week said. I don't think there is anybody who, if they truly read and understand this song, would not want to dare to dream. Whatever your temperament, whatever your situation, wouldn't you love to dream a dream for God? The tears in the Negev, where it was parched and dry, remind us that God can do the impossible. He can make a stream in the middle of the desert. He can take the impossible and make it possible. In the Psalms of Ascent, we go through the dark side of emotions. We cry out to God for help. We beg him to restore us. But this is the perspective of the gospel. Weeping and mourning turn to dancing and rejoicing. Isn't that amazing? Weeping and mourning turn to dancing and rejoicing. So here's the inventory for you this week. Number one, what seeds are you 
sowing. And you might think, I'm not sowing any seeds. Oh, yes, you are. You're either sowing seeds of, I don't care, <laughs> or you're sowing seeds of tears, or you're sowing seeds of planting, or you're sowing seeds of faith. What kind of seeds are you sowing? And be intentional. God, I'm going to take these seeds and I'm going to put them on the ground and give them to you. And trust that you're going to water them and grow them. And I'm going to watch how you restore and give me a dream. Question number two is this. Where do you need restoration? Barbara and Emily are doing this great course on healing. If you're at all interested, talk to us. We have the sheets for it. Maybe you need restoration. You're tired and you just need to take a nap this week. Maybe you need to reach out to somebody here and say, I'm hurting, will you pray for me? Maybe you need to reach out to somebody you're at odds with and say, will you forgive me? Can you restore this? Because we all have areas where we need restoration. And when God starts to restore, we dream again. And the tears turn to a harvest of joy. It's hard work, but it's worthwhile. And the third question is this, what great things has God done for you in you and through you. I want you to think about that. And if you're thinking, I, I can't think of anything, well, you're here. God has done a great thing by bringing you here and getting you hungry. Sometimes we forget because I think Satan wants us to lose our memory. I could probably list 4,000 great things God has done in my life in the last 48 years. But most days I only think about the two or three cruddy things Satan's putting me through right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? What if instead of all the negative, we started to talk about what are the great things God has done? How has he been at work? And start to tell people. Start to celebrate. Start to share the good news. Pray for the joy of the Lord to be your strength. So I think to wrap this up, I'm going to share one more story from the wedding yesterday. We were talking with a couple at the wedding yesterday that we had married the year before. And they were both talking about tough times they've been through. And remembering back, like, do you remember when we were at tears about this? Remember how hard this was? And now look at where we are, how good it is, how joyful we are. And I remember the hard times with that couple. And they were hard. And there were tears. And there were moments where we thought, so in these tears, is there ever going to be joy? But I'm here to tell you, joy is coming. <laughs> And if you don't have joy today, start praying, Lord, restore me, heal me, give me joy. And if you have that joy, for Pete's sake, don't keep it to yourself. Shout it out. Share it. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of people around me who are in need of joy. And if we have it, our job is to share it. So please pray with me. God, we thank you for this song. And we thank you for the reminder in Psalm 126. That you are a God who restores. You restore things in the desert. You bring light out of darkness. You are a God who sees our tears. You put each one in a bottle. And when we sow in tears, you reap a harvest of joy. God, we ask for that harvest of joy. We ask that you would give us dreams for you. God, may we dare to dream big dreams that will impact you and the kingdom and other people in our lives. God, restore us, strengthen us, and then give us joy. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this last song is definitely one that gives me a lot of joy. This is called The Goodness of God. And this is the song Brian shared that our born time fair queen, Kate Downs, uh, sang when she did her talent at the fair. And what I love about this song is it reminds us of God's goodness. God is good, even when our circumstances are not. And this psalm reminds us that all of our lives, God has been faithful. All of our lives, he has been so, so good.